basically just mention who you are, what you have been doing, and again, thank you again for being available to present this morning. And we have about 30 minutes, uh, and the floor is yours. Thank you. Again. Okay. Okay, well, thank you so much. Good morning. Can you all hear me all right? Yes, thanks. Okay, fantastic. First off, I want to say thank you for inviting me to share with you my service science research. Um, this presentation summarizes an eight and a half year investigation into the service science ecosystem within the high tech industry and highlights the discoveries made involving service science competency and the success of a global economy. This work took place at Capella University as part of their organization and management doctoral program. I am grateful for the team of scholars who chose to guide me as I sought to make a contribution to the scientific body of knowledge. Service innovation, technology, and management science has always been a passion of mine. I also have 25 years of industry experience spanning high tech, financial services, higher education, and healthcare, in which I held various service roles. So being on the front line of these industries, I gained great, a great deal of practical knowledge about the effects of both superior and inferior service design and delivery. I have the good fortune of being smack dab in the middle of a gigantic shift in our global economy, one that moves us from a product-centric to a service-centric digital world, and one that is changing the core competencies of businesses now and in the future. The title of my study is Moving the High-Tech Industry Forward Towards Service Science Competency, a Case Study of the ABC Association. I'd like to begin with a couple of definition of terms that are key to my research and that I'll be using throughout this presentation. You will hear me refer to community of practice. You can also think of the term trade association because they can be used interchangeably. Wagner in 1998 characterized it as a self-organizing system defined along three dimensions, joint enterprise, mutual agreement, and a shared repertoire. Wagner argues that communities of practice fulfill a number of functions with respect to the creation, accumulation, and diffusion of knowledge in an organization. The next term is service science. The America Competes Act defines service science as curricula, training, and research programs that are designed to teach individuals to apply scientific, engineering, and management disciplines that integrate elements of computer science, operations research, industrial engineering, business strategy, management science, and social and legal sciences to encourage innovation and in how organizations create value for customers and shareholders that could not be achieved through such disciplines really working in isolation. The next term is service science competency. Service science competency was defined by Shodaha in 2008, and it involves three clusters of competency. Service mindset, which is an orientation towards value creation in the customer-provider relationship that's enabled by systematic assessment, improvement, and innovation of service systems. Integrative competence is the ability to integrate emerging ideas, concepts, and strategies as a result of interaction among disciplines, people, and business processes to deliver a value proposition. A person with integrative competence exhibits complex communicate communication or interactional uh, expertise. Metacompetence is the ability to locate, analyze, and adapt existing competencies depending on context and complexity. Metacompetence includes generic capacities like adaptability, critical thinking, and interpersonal communication, 
which enhance and enable other competencies. The next term is information-based economy. You can also think of knowledge economy, service economy, innovation economy, new economy, knowledge-based service economy, or post-industrial society, because they all can be used interchangeably. According to Gregory Johnston, Pratt, Watts, and Watmore in 2009, who defined information-based economy as an economic regime in which knowledge-intensive manufacturing and service activities become dominant and in which the skill and expertise of workers in the innovation that this facilitates lay at the heart of the success of firms, regions, and national economies. The idea of a knowledge economy derives from Drucker's 1969 account of the role of the knowledge worker in manufacturing industry, and it has been developed through knowledge-based views of the firm and arguments about the centrality of knowledge to the competitiveness of national economies. So now that we have a few terms under our belt, I can move into where this research really all began. It starts with the seminal work of Daniel Bell, whose 1973 research predicts a shift away from manufacturing toward information-based information services. Bell recognized that as a result of this shift, New theories and models were needed to respond to the challenges that the new information-based society presented. Due to the accelerated rate of, the, of change produced by the technological revolution, Bell and others warned that traditional education would not be a sufficient means for building the service competencies required by the new economy. Shifts in the economy affect high-tech organizations in three critical ways. An, organization, um, an organizational need emerges for service offerings that augment product-dominant economic engines. An organizational need emerges for new knowledge to sustain strategic advantage in the new economy. And knowledge gaps and barriers impede the transition of organizational resources in the changing economy. And a shifting economy creates competency gaps across a number of industries, but presents significant challenges, in particular for the high-tech industry and its firms. A thorough review of the literature was undertaken on four key aspects of the topic, paradigm shift, the emerging discipline of service science, service science skills, attitudes, and knowledge, and communities of practice. The findings of the literature review rendered three key elements that really underpin the study. Those elements are a service innovation imperative, not just a desire, but an actual crisis, is occurring in the high-tech industry today. And this crisis is exacerbated by the inability of traditional education in the U.S. to meet the competency development requirements presented by the shift. And finally, communities of practice present a promising alternative for the development of the required service competency. The most suitable approach to examining this phenomenon was a single critical case study where the case was a community of practice with significance in the high-tech industry that employed service scientists. This particular community of practice allowed me to access the data required to answer the two primary research questions. What role does ABC Association play in moving the high-tech industry forward towards service science competency? And how is service science competency manifested within ABC Association to support the service science competency development in the high-tech industry? The community of practice is positioned in the center of the service science competency ecosystem of this industry and employ 65 technology service professionals, of which 38 met the study's inclusion criteria for participation. 
The 12 participants um, represented 18% of the organization's employee base and 32% of its service scientists. The investigation was based on a 20-question interview guide, which was developed using the theoretical service science competency constructs um, defined by Shodaha and claims made by ABC about their service competency. Follow-up questions were also asked during the interviews to probe for deeper meaning when necessary and concluding questions allowed each participant to openly share any additional data that they deemed important to the study. These questions proved to be very valuable during the analysis stage as they provided data that would not otherwise have come to light. In addition to the interview guide, 48 organizational documents were, inter, uh, were analyzed. The job descriptions were the first set of documents reviewed, coded, and used to identify qualified participants for the study, as well as um, were analyzed for alignment to the competencies. Other documents included the organizational chart, white papers, service offering details, and member feedback. And two levels of analysis involving a 15-step process were implemented to arrive at the findings. The 15 steps consisted of an initial review of the primary data, pattern matching against the theoretical constructs, coding, frequency tallying, and grouping into categories and themes. And lastly, I examined major contradictions to ensure all angles of the data were being investigated. The findings from microanalysis provided a better understanding of precisely how each of the service science competency clusters were manifested, both within the community of practice and how the community of practice used their service science competency to influence service science competency development in the high-tech industry. The data revealed a pattern of influence between the community of practice, the individual high-tech firms, and the overall industry. Specifically, the community of practice had the ability to influence individual firms' service science competency by developing, I'm sorry, by directing them on their uh, service business models. This in turn enabled the individual firms to influence the industry's overall service science competency. The data further um, showed that the manifestation of each cluster at the industry level had two, com two components. The ability for individual firms to adopt the competency and the cluster's own unique characteristics. In summary, I found that while the community of practice's primary role is to change the service business models of its high-tech members, the individual product-centric firm must want to improve their service business models to facilitate the improvement process. Individual firms must not only collaborate with peers and share proprietary information, but also be aware of and be able to acquire critical resources that enable the improvement of their service business model. The community of practice's ability to support service science competency development in the high-tech industry really depends on its ability to engage in continuous learning and individual adaptive learning. Specifically, systematic problem solving and codifying information are how the community of practice demonstrates and improves its service mindset competence, while listening to members' needs and building frameworks are how it demonstrates and improves its integrative competence. Lastly, establishing roles and the ability to communicate the big picture are how the community of practice really demonstrates and improves its meta competence. The macro analysis was different from micro level analysis in that it deepened the discovery by synthesizing the findings from the micro level to arrive at four thematic elements. 
The themes are significant because they identify gaps in the community of practice that have serious implications for the high-tech industry, as well as the global economy. As a premier industry association, the community of practice drives service transformation in the industry. Individual firms are dependent on the community of practice for strong guidance and leadership to move forward in the global service economy. But when the community of practice fails to meet all of its objectives, the impact to the individual firms in the industry can um, be decline and ultimate failure. Misalignment of the community of practices learning focus and resources could impede the high-tech industry's ability to innovate and grow, which could in turn impact the entire, entire global population as its dependence on high-tech products and services continues to increase. The lack of impact measures disables the community of practice and prevents it from taking critical and timely corrective action to improve its ability to lead and transform the industry. Subsequently, an opportunity of growth for the community of practice lies in its partnership network. A weak partnership network could weaken individual firms and the industry's ability to locate and apply critical knowledge assets when needed for innovation and growth. But if the community of practice were to focus on strengthening its partnership network, it could counteract the negative effects of a weaker partnership network. So while these themes indicate potentially harmful effects, they also could serve the community of practice as opportunities for growth and a blueprint for improving and really honing their services to their member organizations. The most serious implication to the industry is ABC's not having impact measures to determine how well it's meeting its stated objectives. The industry is currently relying on a premier learning organization to drive imperative transformation that will determine whether the industry survives or fails. And without impact measures, ABC Association has no way to identify learning disabilities and overcome them to effectively lead the industry toward innovation and growth. Left unchecked, ABC's learning disabilities could drive the industry further into decline and impact the global economy as the population's dependency on technology continues to grow. ABC Association's service scientists are self-educating, and this has serious implications for the high-tech industry because individuals use mental maps. Individual mental maps often differ from an organization's values as spouse and values in action. This discrepancy creates misalignment of the individual and collective learnings from the strategic goals of ABC Association. A failure of the high-tech industry to innovate and grow could impact the entire global population as its dependence on high-tech products and services increases. The implications of a weak partner network for a premier learning organization driving transformative change in the high-tech industry also has rippling effects across the global population. Without the ability to locate and apply critical knowledge assets and create wealth, the industry will continue to decline, taking with it the global population that has become increasingly dependent on the high-tech industry. An ABC association is the central mechanism for driving transformational change from product-centric to knowledge-centric service in the high-tech industry. Alignment of its individual and collective learning to ABC's strategic goals is imperative for successfully leading the industry out of decline. Theoretically, the value that ABC Association provides its members in the high-tech industry is the facilitation of inter-organizational knowledge flows in the form of business transformation insights when its service scientists engage member firms in organizational change. 
specifically conducting benchmark studies, audits, responding to member inquiries, and facilitating member-to-member -member interactions are capabilities that ABC Association possesses that help high-tech firms adapt new service business models and transform the industry. Alternatively, service science competency within member firms or value networks may also diffuse inward to ABC service scientists as part of the same interaction and advancing overall competency development. ABC Association's role in service science competency development is required to understand the community-based learning that enables transformation of individual firms and the high-tech industry in the new economy. ABC Association is a learning organization. As such, it is susceptible to learning disabilities and must consider ways to overcome its disabilities to focus on generative or transformational learning. Practically speaking, ABC is not measuring the impact it has um, on its members or the industry. Service scientists who are using mental maps that may not align to ABC's stated values to self-educate and perform their jobs are not getting the critical member industry feedback they need on how well their solutions are working to improve the high-tech services. Critical information on their true strengths, weaknesses, and knowledge deficits goes undiscovered. Analysis revealed the value of a community of practice in the manifestation of service science competency in an industry. Communities of practice, when well positioned with the right competencies, can bring about significant industry change. ABC Association is a premier learning organization, and overall, it is well equipped as a leader of strategic change in the high tech industry. It is uniquely positioned at the center of the service science competency ecosystem and possesses significant resources with the right skills. Service innovation and growth in the high-tech industry depend on the community of practices' ability to lead the industry through transformational change. Opportunities for growth, such as strengthening partnership networks and providing greater support and training for service scientists, however, also exist, and lessons for other communities of practice exist. My recommendations include four um, types of actions to be taken to further um, the results of this study. Action research could be undertaken to address the immediate opportunities found in this study or as a reflective process of progressive problem solving. Researchers could collaborate with others on teams or in part um, of a community of practice within ABC Association to improve the way it addresses the gaps identified in the study. A study to isolate other parts of the high-tech industry to gain a more holistic picture of service science competency in each part of the industry and how it might contribute to the overall industry competency. Specifically, future researchers could replicate this study in organizations outside of the U.S. in countries like India where the impact of outsourcing on service science competency development can be better understood. In addition, repl replicating this qualitative study in communities of practice in other industries where the service imperative to compete in the knowledge economy is similar to that of a high-tech industry could determine what role those organizations play in their industry with regard to service science competency. A quantitative study could be based on questionnaire developed from the findings of this study to implement industry-wide. A quantitative study allows for larger sample sizes and the data can be aggregated to compare results. This study involved a single case, while future research could examine how service science competency is manifested across multiple cases in the same industry and across one or more industries. 
I've listed only a few of the research questions um, that are also possibilities for future collaborative opportunities. Uh, to understand the link between service innovation and service science competency, it's really important to know if service science competency stimulates service innovation. If industries with service science competency innovate more rapidly than industries that do not possess service science competency, and which service science competencies are the most critical for service innovation. I would love to collaborate with service science researchers who are interested in advancing this topic or who may have complementary research goals. If you are one of them or if you know one, I'll provide my contact information at the end so we can continue the conversation. So I'd like to thank you again for inviting me to share this research with you. I am really honored um, to have gotten this wonderful opportunity. Thank you very much. I want to I want to take the time now for questions and answers. Okay. Thank you so much, Don. This was a great presentation, very interesting topics. So do we have any questions, comments? Okay, I have a very quick question. Actually, can you go back to one earlier slide? Sure. Which, okay. which one? I mean, this one. I, I, I really think more, it's not a question, it's more common. I think this is a, uh, I mean, if we can answer some of these questions, uh, I believe uh, we can have lots of buying from industries to move more service signs uh, rather than traditional thinking of products, right? Right. This might be very interesting research, how product-oriented companies are innovating things and being successful versus how service-oriented organizations being, service organizations are innovating and being successful and then comparison between those two, uh, I guess, um, organization types. Oh, that's, that might show. that's great, right. Right. So this is something we can think of. Any questions, comments? We have a quite a group this morning. Everybody is trying to digest the topic. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because uh, there are a couple of research papers written on this. Actually, there's a book. I can send you a link about it. Uh, this book came out from um, Center for Services Leadership at Arizona State University. The book is about service transformation, and they looked at the companies, how they are, trans some manufacturing companies, how they are transforming the service industry. Uh, and um, they did like four or five different case studies. Uh, it might, maybe we can look at some of those case studies and then also look at some case studies of traditional product companies and see some differences or similarities. Okay, so. Thank you so much, uh, Don. Uh, we are right at 8 o'clock. And uh, thank you again for being available to present this very interesting presentation. And I will also personally send you some emails, uh, follow-up emails about this. And uh, thank you, everybody, for this morning. And have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you.